How to Maximize SEO Without Turning Away Human Visitors SEO is all about the search engines, structuring your pages and links to get the most value in the eyes of the search engine algorithms. But getting high rankings is only half the process. Once you get ranked, it's real humans who visit your site. If you over-optimize your site, you can wind up with something that doesn't really help those visitors. In this article, we're going to look at some ways that you can accomplish both. The first thing to remember is that ultimately your site needs to be valuable to human visitors. The search engine spiders aren't going to make you any money, real people are. That means you need to be sure that the content is useful to the people who land on your site. If your pages are stuffed full of keywords and the content is barely readable, people aren't going to stick around for very long. They'll just go back and find another site that provides more value. Always write with real visitors in mind. Yes, you should optimize your pages for their primary keywords, but never at the expense of readability. Generally, you don't want to go any higher than 2% keyword density. That means you should use your keyword no more than twice for every 100 words of content, and maybe only once. Another factor in convincing people to visit your site is your title and meta description tags. The title tag is one of the most powerful parts of your page as far as SEO is concerned, so you definitely want to include your keyword in it. But most of the search engines also use that title tag as the title of your page in the search results. And they often use the meta description tag as the snippet of content that gets displayed in the search results. So make sure your title and description have a good call to action to convince searchers to click through. If your title and description tags are well written, you can often get more clicks in the second or third position in the search results than a site ranked at number one but with a poor title and or description tag. And getting more clicks in the search results could ultimately help your site outrank the top results since it's quite possible that the search engine algorithms take this factor into account. 5 Free Sources of Backlinks Backlinks are probably one of the most critical components of SEO. In fact, if you did absolutely no on-site SEO and just built backlinks to your site, you could outrank sites that have perfect on-page optimization. In this article, we're going to look at five free sources of backlinks. Article marketing. Article marketing is probably one of the most widely used backlink methods for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's easy. Almost anyone can write an article. And number two, it's cheap or free in most cases. You write an article and submit it to one or more article directories. In exchange for the free content you're giving them, the directory allows you to include a resource box at the end of the article. You can include one or more links in that resource box that point back to your website. Blog commenting. Most blogging platforms such as WordPress and Blogger let you enter a URL when you leave a comment on a post. Your name generally gets linked to that URL, so every time you leave a comment, you create a link back to your website. The secret to building links this way is to leave valuable comments, not just useless things like, hey, great post. Social bookmarking. Social bookmarking on sites like delicious.com and clipmarks.com let you add bookmarks to your favorite web pages so you can come back to them later. But those bookmarks also create backlinks from the bookmarking site to yours, so this is a good way to generate more backlinks. Free hosting. Free hosting sites like WordPress.com and Squidoo.com let you build pages about virtually any topic. You can build pages on these sites about the same topic as your own website and then include links back to your site within the content. Some of them, like Squidoo for example, will even let you add an RSS feed to your page. If your website is running on a blog platform like WordPress, you can add the feed to your Squidoo page so it gets updated every time you post a new article on your site and that update will include a new backlink. Social media. Social media sites like Twitter and Facebook are also very effective ways to get backlinks. Whenever you post an update to one of those sites with a link to your website, that update will get picked up by Google and the other search engines, resulting in another backlink to your website. Getting the most SEO bang for your buck from your content. There's a common saying in internet marketing, content is king. This means that good content is ultimately the most important thing since without it you're going to be hard pressed to convince your visitors to take whatever action it is you want them to take once they reach your site. In this article we're going to look at some ways that you can get more leverage from your content. Let's face it, creating content can be challenging. 
Whether you're writing articles, making videos, designing images, or creating any other type of content, you're probably going to be faced with writer's block at some point or another. One way to minimize this problem is to get more mileage out of the content you already have. There are a number of ways you can do this. Repurposing content. One of the most effective ways to stretch your content is to repurpose it into different formats. If you have an article on your website, you could record an audio version or create a video with a PowerPoint presentation. The content's the same, but because you have multiple formats, you can post them in different places such as YouTube or iTunes to get more exposure. These repurposed versions can also link back to your website, which can help with SEO as well. Rewriting content. If you use article marketing or free hosting as a backlink strategy, you have to write even more content. Rewriting content that you've already created is a good way to simplify this process. It still takes some time and effort, but because you're not having to come up with completely new ideas for content, it can be a lot easier. This is especially true if you're working in a niche that you're not necessarily all that familiar with yourself. Spinning content. Article spinners will take a seed article and spin it into multiple versions. This is similar to rewriting an article, but you can generate any number of versions this way. Spinning has a bit of a mixed reputation. Some people swear by it and some others swear at it. But the fact is, it works well if you take the time to create a good seed article. It can take some work to generate a seed article that creates readable spins, but if you do it right, you can generate dozens of unique articles from that one seed, saving a lot of time and effort in the process. How to make the most of your article marketing. Article marketing is a great way to build backlinks, but simply submitting articles to the directories and sitting back waiting for the traffic to start flowing doesn't work like it used to. In this article, we're going to look at some strategies for maximizing your results from article marketing. First, the landscape of article marketing has changed quite a bit over the last few months. Google's Panda update hit most of the article directories pretty hard and they've really clamped down on their quality requirements as a result. 250 to 300 word articles that are really just reworked content from other places just won't cut it anymore. You need to write longer articles, 500 plus words, and they need to be just as high quality as what you would put on your own websites. This goes beyond the minimum requirements for most article directories, but look at it this way. You could get by with the bare minimum, but if Google does another big update that spooks the article sites into tightening their requirements even further, those bare minimum articles might suddenly be not good enough and get removed from the site. Wouldn't you rather put a little extra effort into writing articles that will stand the test of time? Another way to get more out of your articles is to build backlinks to your articles once they go live on the article directories. Most people just submit an article and move on to the next one, so if you're building links to those articles, you're going to outrank most of your competitors. And the backlinks that you include in those articles will be more powerful since the article will be getting some backlink juice as well. That extra link juice will trickle down to your own website over time. And finally, treat your articles as a source of direct traffic as well as a source of backlinks. Include a good call to action in your resource box to get people to click through to your website. You'll still get links to your website, but you'll also get some direct traffic from people who find your articles on the article sites. This direct traffic can come pretty quickly too, so it can help get your site moving while you wait for the links to have an effect on your rankings in Google and the other search engines. How to optimize WordPress for the best SEO results. WordPress is a popular platform for building websites because it makes the process so easy. WordPress handles all the formatting and layout of your site so you can focus on the content. But the default setup isn't very well optimized for the search engines. In this article, we're going to discuss some ways to improve the SEO on your WordPress-based sites. Privacy settings. The first thing you should do is check the privacy settings in the WordPress admin dashboard. You can choose whether or not to make the site visible to the search engines. If the wrong option is set, your site won't be indexed or ranked. The default setting is to make the site visible to the search engines, but it's still a good idea to double check. If this isn't set right, nothing else we're going to cover will matter. Permalinks. The next change you should make is to the permalink structure. By default, WordPress uses a pretty unfriendly URL structure. Your posts and pages will show up as something like www.mydomain.com/question mark id equals and then some number. 
There's no keywords included in the URL, and there's some debate about how effective the search engines are at even indexing sites with these type of URLs. Instead, you should change the permalink structure to include keywords. You can make this change in the permalink setting page and set it to something like what's shown on the screen here. This will use the title of your post as the URL for the page. For example, if your post title is My First Post, the URL would be mydomain.com slash myfirstpost. This will ensure that you get the keywords in your URL, assuming that you use them in the post title. SEO Plugins Another important step to improving the SEO on your site is installing an SEO WordPress plugin. There are several of them available, but the most commonly used plugin is called All-in-One SEO. This plugin will optimize the HTML tags on each page, title tag, meta tags, and so on, using the post title and the content of the post itself. You can override these settings manually if you want to really optimize each page, but even the default settings are a huge improvement over the default setup for WordPress. And take note, some premium themes, such as Thesis, have SEO features built into them. If you're using one of these themes, there's no need to install a plugin. In fact, doing so can cause conflicts between the theme SEO and the plugin SEO, so you're better to leave it up to the theme in this case. How to optimize WordPress for the best SEO results. WordPress is a popular platform for building websites because it makes the process so easy. WordPress handles all the formatting and layout of your site, so you can focus on the content. But the default setup isn't very well optimized for the search engines. In this article, we're going to discuss some ways to improve the SEO on your WordPress-based sites. Privacy settings. The first thing you should do is check the privacy settings in the WordPress admin dashboard. You can choose whether or not to make the site visible to the search engines. If the wrong option is set, your site won't be indexed or ranked. The default setting is to make the site visible to the search engines, but it's still a good idea to double check. If this isn't set right, nothing else we're going to cover will matter. Permalinks. The next change you should make is to the permalink structure. By default, WordPress uses a pretty unfriendly URL structure. Your posts and pages will show up as something like www.mydomain.com slash question mark ID equals and then some number. There's no keywords included in the URL, and there's some debate about how effective the search engines are at even indexing sites with these type of URLs. Instead, you should change the permalink structure to include keywords. You can make this change in the permalink setting page and set it to something like what's shown on the screen here. This will use the title of your post as the URL for the page. For example, if your post title is My First Post, the URL would be mydomain.com slash myfirstpost. This will ensure that you get the keywords in your URL, assuming that you use them in the post title. SEO Plugins Another important step to improving the SEO on your site is installing an SEO WordPress plugin. There are several of them available, but the most commonly used plugin is called All-in-One SEO. This plugin will optimize the HTML tags on each page, title tag, meta tags, and so on, using the post title and the content of the post itself. You can override these settings manually if you want to really optimize each page, but even the default settings are a huge improvement over the default setup for WordPress. And take note, some premium themes, such as Thesis, have SEO features built into them. If you're using one of these themes, there's no need to install a plugin. In fact, doing so can cause conflicts between the theme SEO and the plugin SEO, so you're better to leave it up to the theme in this case. Is article spinning an effective SEO strategy? Article spinning is the process of rewriting an article on a large scale. You go through your seed article and mark it up with synonyms and rewritten sentences, then the spinner software generates any number of unique versions of, from that seed article. This process has been around for several years, but it has improved considerably over that time. There are still two camps, however, people who think it works great and people who hate it. In this article, we're going to look at some of the advantages and disadvantages of article spinning. The main reason people like article spinning is because it makes it possible to generate dozens or even hundreds of somewhat unique articles from a single seed article. How effective and how unique those spins are really comes down to how much time and effort you put into creating the seed article in the first place. If you use an article spinner application that automates the process, you'll tend to get mediocre results. 
If you spin your seed article manually, on the other hand, and really put some effort into creating multiple versions that are all readable when spun, you can get articles that are all quite unique and still perfectly acceptable quality. Let's say it takes you two hours to do a really thorough spin on a 400 word article. That means you create multiple versions of sentences as well as individual words and nest them effectively so when you generate a spun version there are enough options that it can be quite unique. You might think that two hours is a lot of time to spend on it, but the fact is you can probably generate several dozen really unique articles from that one seed. How long would it take you to write or even rewrite that many articles? Once you have those unique spins, you can use them for various things. Posting on sites like Squidoo and Hubpages, submitting to second-tier article directories, posting to blog networks, or sending out through article submission services or software. These will all create multiple backlinks to your website, all from a single seed article. If you do this on a regular basis, even once or twice a month, you can have enough content to generate new backlinks to your site for quite some time. Is Google the only search engine that matters? When people talk about SEO and natural search traffic, they're generally referring to Google. It gets the largest percentage of search traffic out of the major search engines, but should you focus purely on Google or spread your efforts out across all the different search engines? Google has held roughly 65% of the overall market share for search pretty consistently for the last year or more. Yahoo and Bing, the two main competitors, are both under 20%. On the surface, this would indicate that you should focus on Google for your search traffic. Those numbers don't tell the whole story, however. The search market share can vary from one market to another. It's not a hard and fast rule, but in general, Google tends to be used by searchers who are more tech-savvy. So in markets that have more technical users, Google's market share can be high, even higher than the overall numbers. But in less technical markets, Bing and Yahoo often have higher shares than they do overall. This is particularly true for Bing because it's the default search engine for Windows users. There are a lot of people who just use whatever is included by default, so they use Bing. Another factor that you should consider is that putting all your eggs in one basket is never a good idea. Google is notoriously fickle when it comes to changing things, and even if your site is ranking well today, there's no guarantee it will continue. One little change in Google's algorithm could cause your rankings to plunge. If you focus on Bing and Yahoo, to some degree at least, you'll have alternative sources of traffic if that ever happens. It's also important to consider some of the changes that have happened on the internet over the last couple of years. Sites like Facebook and Twitter have become extremely popular and many people spend a large percentage of their time on them, particularly on Facebook. While these sites aren't search engines, they can still be very effective for driving traffic to your websites. And because they're harder to game due to their social nature, they're being used as a ranking factor by the search engines. By focusing some of your efforts on these sites, you can get the benefits in Google and other search engines while still diversifying your traffic strategy somewhat. SEO versus conversions. Search engine optimization, or SEO, is all about getting your site ranked higher in the search engines, especially Google. There are various strategies that can help you rank higher, both on-site and off-site. But no matter how high your site ranks and how much traffic you get from the search engines, you're going to need to convert those visitors if you want to generate any revenue with your site. And by convert those visitors, we mean convince them to take whatever action it is you want them to take. Clicking on an ad, signing up for your email list, liking your page on Facebook, or buying your product, and so on. You need to balance the need for SEO against the conversion rate of your page to be successful. That means optimizing the visitor experience as well as the SEO of your pages. Don't overuse keywords on your page to the point of making it unreadable for real visitors. Keyword stuffing is one of the most common mistakes people make, and frankly, it isn't necessary anyway. Years ago, when the search engines were still relatively new, whatever site used a keyword the most times often ranked the highest, but those days are long gone. It's also a good idea to include things that make your site more sticky, like video and audio content. A sticky site simply means your visitors stay longer, and these types of content will help. The search engines can identify when someone clicks on your site and then goes back and clicks on a different one. If that happens too much, it's quite likely that it will impact your ranking, and not in a good way. So adding things that keep people engaged can ultimately help both your conversions and your SEO. 
You can also look at the conversion process as a multi-step strategy. The page that your visitors land on when they click on your site in the search results could be the first step in the process, perhaps convincing them to opt into your email list or click through to another page on your site. Once you get them beyond the initial page, you can focus much more on the conversion aspect and less on SEO, since it doesn't matter how high those pages rank or if they do at all. The only page that needs to rank highly is the landing page they hit when they first click through. Should you automate your backlinking strategy? Automation is one of the things that most internet marketers are looking for. If you can automate a task, particularly a repetitive, time-consuming one, it can free up your time for other things. In this article, we're going to look at some of the pros and cons of automating your backlink building. There are a number of ways to automate your backlinks, some totally automated and others just partially so. Article submission services or applications, blog commenting applications, blog network posting, and automated link exchanges. By automating these things, you can generate backlinks on an ongoing basis without having to constantly go searching for new places to link from. The biggest drawback to these automated services is the fact that they tend to generate links from places that aren't necessarily all that valuable. Take blog networks for example. There are a number of services, both free and paid, that have a number of blogs where you can post with backlinks to your site. Some of them will take one article you submit and post it to multiple sites, sometimes even spinning the article in the process. But many of the sites it gets posted to may have little or no value. They're often set up purely to accept these free articles and they have no page rank and may not even be fully indexed in the search engines. Those type of links really don't give you much value. In most cases you can choose any two of these three things. Low cost, easy, and high quality. High quality links that are easy to build will cost you more money. Easy to build links that don't cost much won't be very high quality and high quality links that don't cost much will be harder to build. Automated backlink building is often best used as one part of a larger strategy. You should continue building higher quality backlinks even though they take more time and effort and use the automated services to supplement those links. You can even use the automated backlinking methods to build links to the pages where you're manually building links. For example, if you use article marketing as one backlinking strategy Use the automated systems to build links to your articles once they go live on the article directories. This will help increase the value of the links that point from your articles back to your own website.